Thanks for tuning in to A Better World. I'm your host, Luis Acevedo. Don't forget to subscribe to the blog at loseview.blogspot.com. And today I want to talk about this tweet President Trump sent out this, uh, this morning where it says, I have instructed the United States Navy to shoot down and destroy any and all Iranian gunboats if they harass our ships at sea. Now, if you recall, last year there was a big incident at the Strait of Anman, I believe, where a U.S. oil tanker was allegedly shot down. And the United States government immediately blamed the attack on Iran. Now, the United Nations wanted to do a little bit of research into this, investigation, as well as other countries. But the United States said, no, 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 no. It is Iran. They did it because they're the bad guys. And probably because the deep state, if you will, uh, the military-industrial complex, as Dwight Eisenhower has called it, wants war with Iran and has wanted war with Iran for years. I mean, you go back to the 40s with the CIA going over to the Middle East and destroying these once uh, democratic countries and making them into the authoritarian, totalitarian regimes we're seeing today in Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, etc. We and a lot of other Western nations have destroyed these countries because they wanted to nationalize their oil, etc. And so ever since George Bush Jr. was president, we've wanted to go to war with Iran just because we itch for war. That's the way we make our money, and it's so stupid. It's not really the way we make our money, but you know, if you can keep war going, then you're gonna have to keep paying the government to, you know, fund all of these projects. But thankfully President Trump has scaled back on some of those, has called some of the troops home. Now, that's a conversation for a different day. Um, so with this tweet, it makes me wonder if we're going to see another false flag like we did back in June of 2019. Um, because that's what that ended up being. That Strait of Amman attack ended up being nothing more than a false flag and us trying to instigate war. And I'm thinking that that is going to be the case with this tweet and with what we see going on in the oil market with oil prices going down into the negatives. That means the end of the petrodollar and the end of the U.S. economy as we know it. So once again, like I've been saying, this coronavirus, all it did was expedite the crash. It didn't do anything extra other than just speed up the process. It wasn't the camel that broke the, it wasn't the last straw that broke the camel's back. No, the U.S. economy was going down. And like I've been saying for almost four years, what we see with the economy has been artificial. Yes, President Trump wants to take credit for this economy, but that was so idiotic on his part because it was going to collapse. The bubble was going to pop. It was inevitable. It was never going to sustain. And now we're going to see the collapse of the dollar. We're seeing the collapse of the oil market. And um, give me one second here. I think my wife just got back from the doctor. She had to get an ultrasound. And so I don't want to have any of that feedback noise right now, but I'll have to go talk to her in a second. Um, so that's pretty exciting. But anyway, um, yeah, because we're having twins. And so that's pretty cool. But um, you have this tweet going out and you know with the petrodollar crashing oil crashing etc um it definitely makes one concerned because this is what causes wars and this is the perfect opportunity for china and india and asia to rise up well asia i mean africa not asia and africa is going to take a while but china and india are growing exponentially and Africa is going to be there before we know it and it's going to be those two countries in that continent um, and some countries within that continent of Africa to rise up I mean they have billions of people in those two countries and continent so they have a lot more buying power than we do a lot more say than we do and they're you know uh, the financial institution uh, infrastructure is going to change drastically it's going to probably tilt in china's favor and then maybe india's and then maybe africa's or maybe they'll all you know join forces i'm not sure maybe even russia will be thrown in the mix there but this is 
you know, a little concerning, and there's not much we can do about it as just average citizens because we don't really have a say in what goes on in our government anyway, despite the fact that we have this propaganda spew 24-7 that our government's for the people, run by the people, when that has proven, you know, not to be the case. Now, we do... You know, there are things we can do to change power and things like that, but that requires a lot of violence and unnecessary things that I would never endorse, and I don't think that's the right way to go about any of it. Um, but I definitely do think that what we're seeing here is a paradigm shift right before our eyes. I mean, I've been talking about a paradigm shift for uh, the better half of, like, two years that we're going to see this huge paradigm shift within our lifetime. And that's going to include, you know, the financial institutions. That's going to include the power, the political power shifting into Eastern hands rather than Western hands. You know, I was watching this interview um, from Gary Vaynerchuk yesterday, and he was saying that, uh, the United States is going to be the new Europe, where basically they're irrelevant to the world economy. And I couldn't have agreed more. We're going to see that more and more. So something we just need to be aware of, and this isn't to cause panic or scare, and, you know, World War III is coming. You know, I don't think that's happening, but I do think that we need to be aware of what's going on. That way we can position ourselves in the best possible place to benefit from whatever's to come, or at least mitigate the blow somewhat. So if you like what you see here, please like, share, and subscribe. And um, yeah, we'll see you later. Peace.